Hello, this is Hunter McDermott with Anyone Can Play Guitar uh, with another video that comes directly from uh, your questions. This uh, particular video is a, a combination of a couple questions uh, I received from different viewers. Uh, thank you for those. Uh, I'll leave their, their names in the description. Um, that I thought were related, uh, kind of build on each other, so I just thought I'd put them together in the same video. So the, the first question is, uh, how do I stay focused uh, so that progress can happen, right? How do I um, organize all the stuff that I have uh, and, and ensure that I am progressing uh, toward some sort of goal? Uh, and then the second part was, how do I do all that stuff uh, even if I don't have a teacher? So uh, I will preface all of this by saying if you can afford a teacher and want one. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. I used to teach myself. I've taken lessons from multiple teachers in the past, and uh, you know, there's nothing quite like having uh, a, an actual person you can can talk to face to face. Because um, in addition to all the the nice materials that they might have prepared for you, um, which is really like the least of what a teacher uh, can offer. Uh, there's so much more. There's their anecdotes. They've been out teaching and performing probably for years as well. Uh, they have wisdom, right, from from experience, and you can't get that necessarily from a book or a DVD or a tutorial or whatever, right? It has to kind of come from somebody who's been there and who's done it and who can uh, communicate to you on that kind of candid, personal level. Uh, and it's just nice to have somebody that you can ask random questions to uh, about music. Um, and you can form a bond with and, um, you know, share your successes and your failures and, and all that good stuff. So again, if you can uh, and want to, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, but in lieu of that, there are certainly things that you can do uh, and should do, actually, in fact, even if you do have a teacher, to uh, organize your practice sessions and uh, set goals for yourself. And ultimately, as I've written on the screen here, stay focused. Uh, that is like the number one, that is the number one uh, issue that I think we all face uh, when we're learning something new and perhaps musicians and maybe even guitarists in particular. Uh, there is just so much stuff out there to, to learn uh, and so many resources available, uh, many of which are free. Uh, it gives us new new stuff to focus on all the time or to want to focus on. Uh, so you've got books and DVDs and tutorials and thousands of people like me putting videos up all the time with new stuff. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. Uh, and that stuff's all fantastic, right? So, uh, what we're, what we need to realize is that we have no real shortage of materials of like stuff to learn. Uh, there's tons of stuff out there and it's pretty readily available. Um, especially in with on the internet and then even before that there was uh, plenty of stuff in book and DVD form and videos and all that kind of stuff uh, and so that's that's all all well and good but what tends to happen is you focus on on one thing for one day you go oh, I really heard this cool walking bass this person did so you work on that you look up some videos or some tutorials about how to do that and then maybe tomorrow you're like oh man there was this neat melodic minor lick I heard or maybe even I just heard the term melodic minor and I want to learn more about that, uh, whatever that is. And you look up that kind of stuff and then maybe the third day it's like, oh, these cool chords I need to learn. And then you can kind of look back after a few weeks or a month um, and go, okay, I, I feel like I did a lot. You know, every day I sat down to practice and I was, you know, staying focused in that session on something, uh, but I don't really have much to show for it. Like I never quite mastered that walking bass thing. I don't really still feel comfortable with melodic minor. Uh, so you've built up uh, a whole lot of nothing, really. That's the same thing that would happen if you're learning a foreign language. If you just learn a bunch of stuff, but you don't use it, you don't uh, practice the same kinds of things enough times to really achieve a level of mastery, uh, then you forget it, right? And it, and it kind of amounts to a bunch of wasted time, right? Sort of inefficient use of your time. And I think that really all comes down to uh, focus and uh, what really helps us to focus, you know, how we go about uh, making this possible uh, is by setting goals for ourselves. So let's talk about goals first, uh, and then we'll talk about a way to uh, manage 
those goals and to kind of log and track our progress. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, at the micro level, like, okay, now you are sitting here, you've got your goals in place, you know what you're going to do. I'm holding the guitar and I need to practice right now. What are some, uh, some good things to focus on for individual uh, exercises or pieces that you're playing? Um, and then, you know, whatever else we can think of that, that kind of goes along with this. So let's start with goals. Um, so just like you are doing right now, looking up interesting, uh, new techniques or strategies or methods for learning things or, uh, or whatever else you're trying to do. I do that too. And I'm happy to share things that I found that I find work really well, uh, have worked for me. Uh, so the first one is, and this is pretty huge, is uh, there's this uh, a guy named Mike Outram. He has a site called Electric Campfire, uh, but he has a free video that's up on YouTube uh, that outlines his um, method for creating a uh, practice journal. Um, and it's it's pretty brilliant. I don't know if he came up with it, but he shared it, and uh, I've kind of taken it and modified it slightly, um, but really not, not much. It's a, a very good idea um, that I think works really well. So the whole, and I'll show it to you in a second, the whole uh, concept is that at any given time, at a glance, you can see your goals laid out for you both, uh, or all across a wide range of time. So you've got the quarter, okay, here's what I'm working on for the this quarter, here's what I'm working on for this week, and here's what I'm working on uh, today. Um, so before we look at it, that's what I want you to think about first. Okay, so uh, I used to teach guitar lessons, and the first question I would ask every single student when they came in uh, for the first time and periodically throughout uh, is, why do you want to learn guitar? Like, what do you want to learn? Why are you here? What has inspired you to do this, right? Um, you felt compelled at some point to go buy a guitar, to drive over here, to pay me, to take the time out of your life to to work on this thing. So what is it that you want to do? Uh, and you know, it can be often surprising when you ask yourself this question that maybe you don't even have an answer. Like it's there's something that drawing you to this, and you haven't quite figured out how to articulate what that is. Uh, and, you know, I deal with that too. Uh, the, on a day-to-day -day basis, I know that playing music uh, is often very fun. Like having fun playing music, making sounds, uh, and expressing myself is great, right? That's uh, reason enough to do anything. So that's a good way to start. Um, but then it comes time to take lessons and uh, learn things. You uh, really need to, to start thinking more specifically about what you're trying to do, what genre you might like, what songs that you, you want to learn, um, you know, where you see yourself uh, in, in the future. Uh, so the way I like to think about it is uh, you've got this long-term goal uh, that kind of keeps you, that's like the road that you're going to get on, uh, and then you've got these different smaller goals that help keep you on that road. Uh, so here's the, the notebook that I've got. It's blank right now. I'll just show you the blank pages. Um, but this is it. So it's if you can see, we've got uh, seven sheets here. These are like half size sheets. And then for every, or six rather, we got six of these. And then every seventh one is longer. So that means part of it kind of sticks out here on the edge. Uh, and that represents a week, right? So we got six and then one. So we've got seven days of stuff. Uh, and then we do that over and over again. So I've got 13 sets of that in a row here. Uh, and then at the top, um, We've got one, one big sheet that sticks out above uh, the other three. So the whole idea is that up at the top, you put uh, your goals for the quarter. Okay, this is what I'm going to do for the next... This is what I want to achieve after this 13-week period is concluded. Um, so, for example, uh, what I'm interested in right now is uh, working on chord melody for, uh, for jazz stuff. So I want to... Um, learn, I want to memorize and have under my fingers, like in my repertoire, uh, three complete chord melody tunes by the end of the quarter. Uh, so that would be my goal. Like maybe it could be one, maybe it could be five, you know, whatever. And that can change. But that's kind of keeps me on, okay, I know chord melody stuff is what I'm focusing on. All right, and then off to the side here uh, would, would be your week. Okay, so what do I need to do? Let's say I'm just starting chord melody stuff. 
uh, what do I want to do this week? Uh, well, I need to, I said I wanted to learn three tunes, so how about we just pick one tune? Okay, so let's pick a tune. That, that's, you know, week, week goal. Let's think about goal, uh, which tune I want to work on. Uh, and then start, uh, you know, have the, uh, the basic chord melody skeleton done. All right, so that means playing the chords with the melody notes uh, blended in. So let's say you know, no solos, no walking bass, nothing fancy, just the basics. For, that's the week. All right, and then I think about, okay, today. What do I need to do today? All right, well, the first thing is I need to pick a tune. So maybe picking a tune would be something I do today, and then learning the melody. So just get the melody under my fingers, get it in my ears, and, and be able to play it you know, reasonably well. And then tomorrow... Uh, once I feel like I've got the melody done, start working on the chords. Okay, get the chords down. Maybe it's day three, I put the chords and the melody together. Uh, and then maybe I focus on eight measures, or twelve measures, or the first half, or the A section, or, or whatever. You know, I kind of limit my focus. Uh, and then throughout the week, I expand that focus as I work on those individual pieces, so that by the end of the week, I've achieved that goal. Uh, so what's so brilliant about this is is the layout, right? It's maybe it may seem arbitrary at first, but it's it's so important to have your longer term goal, your shorter term goal, and then your daily checklist all in one place. Because what will happen is you sit down to practice and you hear something cool while you're warming up, or you know you listen to somebody earlier in the day or saw something that you got interested in, and that that makes you want to go off in that direction. But then when you sit down to practice and you look, hey, is that gonna help me? achieve my week-long goal and if the answer is no then don't work on that during this session stay focused on achieving this week's goal all right so then what do you do with the new thing well okay look at the next week okay uh, I've got something new that I want to do that doesn't really align with what I established for this week so add it to the next week or maybe it's really way new and totally uh, unrelated to what you're working on set it for the next quarter all right leave yourself a note to say okay you know, after this 13 weeks and I've really got the chord melody stuff in a good place, I'm going to move on to something different, uh, and I've already laid out that, that course of action. Maybe take some notes for resources that you found or whatever. So, again, the brilliance of that is that you're uh, constantly reminded of what goals you set for yourself uh, so that you don't deviate from those goals. And it doesn't mean that you can't do whatever you want to do, of course. You know, you don't want to be so rigid that it's not fun, but... Sticking with something long enough to achieve mastery of it, or close to mastery, uh, is really the only way that you improve on the thing, right? Uh, and, it, and you'll improve so much more quickly when you really hammer something home before moving on to the next thing. So, uh, kudos to Mike for that system. It's uh, really fantastic. It's been working really great for me for a while, um, because I do exactly the same thing. I sit down and I go oh, you know, I see something shiny and I want to go do that. But I look at my notebook and I go, okay, no, you have to stay focused. This is what you're working on. Stick with it. Do the shiny thing later. Uh, and that's okay, right? You'll get to it all eventually. Um, so that's something I would highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to share his, the link to, uh, to the video where he kind of des uh, describes how to make that or, or his philosophy there. Um, so go check that out and, and do that, I think, or some sim, sim, system similar to that, I think, would, would really benefit you. Um, but again, the critical part is the, is the specific layout and having all three of those levels of goals visible at all times. You don't want to hide it back in some other page, right? It's, it's got to kind of hit you, stare you in the face when you, uh, when you sit down. So do that. So check that out. Um, so... Uh, the next thing is, well, you've determined this goal. Okay, so say we have our notebook all laid out. We've got our quarterly goals, our weekly goals, we've got our daily goals. Uh, so then you sit down and you've actually got the guitar in your hand and you need to work on something. Uh, so the, the exercises, the things that you need to do uh, to achieve your goal should be easier to identify now that you've kind of broken it down into pieces. If I want to work on if I want to master a certain thing, then I break that down into pieces. Oh, I need to learn the chords, I need to learn the melody, whatever. Uh, so then when you're actually focusing on those individual things, uh, there's a, a really great method uh, that this man named uh, Kenny Werner uh, created, let's see here, uh, called the Learning Diamond. Um, and you can certainly modify this if you want, but 
Uh, his strategy, this comes from a really great book that I can recommend called Effortless Mastery. Uh, and I'll link to that as well. Um, so what he's got is this this uh, four-point uh, diamond shape here where he outlines four different uh, things that you can focus on when you're when you're working on something. So on the top we have play effortlessly. And effortlessness is, uh, he talks about this a lot more in the book, but uh, I define it as, as basically master, mastery, right? Like effortlessness, think about anything that you've done um, effortlessly. It's probably happened without you really having to think about it. You were probably very physically relaxed when you did it. Um, you know, it's kind of like the nirvana level of, of playing music, right? I'm not stressing over what chord I'm playing or the rhythm. Uh, I'm not physically tense. I'm not having to try to remember what the next part is, right? I know it so well. It's ingrained in me at this point that I can just do it, right? The same way that you can probably walk around and communicate with other people in your native language, right? Uh, you want to get to that point where you just don't have to think about it so much. Uh, so that's different from playing perfectly, because playing perfectly could be something where you're having to really focus your attention. You can do it, and you can do it perfectly, <laughs> but it's really, you know, might be a little bit more tense than you want to be. You might be thinking hard about what the next part is, uh, or whatever. So there's a, a subtle difference there, but there is a difference. Uh, then at the bottom we have... Uh, playing the entire piece, or example, or passage, or whatever. Uh, he uses this uh, example. So that's just is simply playing everything, right? Not breaking it down into pieces, but playing the entire thing. And then the last thing is playing fast. Or, as I say, playing up to speed, right? Like however fast the song should be playing it at that tempo. Uh, should be your ultimate goal. So the idea with this diamond is that you, uh, when you're practicing, you should focus on three of these at a time, with uh, at at the, uh, you know, by sacrificing one of the four, doing the other three. So say I'm learning a, a brand new a new piece and I want to learn the melody. Well, then I probably won't work, worry about playing fast. I don't need to play fast because I'm just learning it. But I do want to learn it correctly. I want to learn the correct notes, the correct chords. So I do want to play it perfectly, take my time with it. Uh, and then I want to play the entire example. So I want to learn uh, you know, the entire thing, but I'm not going to worry about playing it fast. Or maybe I've been playing it for a little while and I can play it perfectly and I can play it fast, but I can't play the whole thing, right? I can play uh, two measures or one lick or one section of the tune, right? I've broken it down into a, a small, easily digestible piece that I can both play fast and perfectly. Uh, and then you get that to a level of effortlessness. Uh, and, you know, same goes with anything. So if you want to uh, not worry about playing it perfectly, but you want to work on your speed, then you might make some, mis might make some mistakes, but you're going to try to force yourself to get through the whole thing uh, at the correct tempo. And it's good to work on all of those, um, sacrificing any one of those. Uh, and then, of course, the last one would be, I'm really having to think hard, um, kind of tight, and thinking about everything and working, like pushing myself to play fast and pushing myself to play the entire thing, uh, which is hardly effortless, right? I'm putting lots of mental and physical uh, effort into doing this, so I haven't quite mastered it yet. Um, but I'm doing the other three. So anyway, that's the idea. And this is something I do all the time, no matter what I'm working on. I, I mostly start with playing perfectly because I'm trying to learn something new. So I'm going to get the notes right. Uh, I don't, then I move on to uh, playing the entire example pretty much. Okay. I can play it well. Now let's keep adding more and more measures until I've learned the whole thing. Uh, and then I get to where I can play it fast. Okay. Now I've learned the whole thing and I can play it properly. Let's increase the tempo, get it to where it needs to be. And then all three of those ult ultimately add up to uh, being able to play it effortlessly. Once I've I put in the time and the repetitions required to uh, to get that in my ears and under my fingers, then I don't have to think about it anymore. It's just something I can do. Um, so there you go. So that's something that to focus on uh, with regard to individual exercises or tunes that you're working on. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for that. Um, and the last thing that I will say is... Uh, I find this personally very useful is to 
don't forget that what you're trying to do, probably, <laughs> I would guess that most of you are trying to learn tunes. So whatever you do, I'm going to give it some exclamation points here for emphasis. Uh, don't forget that what you're probably trying to do is learn how to play tunes, right? Play songs. Um, that's what probably inspired you to want to take up the instrument in the first place, to learn these songs, to be able to play them. Uh, so whatever exercises or goals that you come up with should be in service of those tunes. So like in my example, I was doing chord melody stuff. Well, chord melody, uh, I want to apply to, in my case, three different tunes. I want to learn three songs and be able to play the chords and the melody at the same time and be able to solo and walk the bass and all that kind of stuff. And then my individual goals uh, are just working on different pieces of that. Okay, work on the chords the chords of this tune, work on the melody of this tune, work on improvising over the changes of this tune, right? So it's all kept in in context. Uh, it's so easy to, to lose sight of that. Um, so in my personal uh, experience, years ago when I was uh, taking lessons from a really great teacher, I didn't really know what I wanted to learn. I was not following the advice that I am now giving you, which is I just kind of uh, nebulously wanted to be better. Like, I just want to be good at this instrument. Uh, and I thought at the time that uh, learning jazz was the way to go because I thought that jazz was complex and interesting and it kind of encompassed uh, aspects from lots of different genres. Uh, and so it seemed sensible to me, like, okay, well, if I kind of like shoot for the moon, then. Uh, I'll get pretty far, right? Maybe I won't make it there, but I'll, I'll cover a lot of stuff, like, because I'll have to, because it's it's going to demand that of me. Uh, and, you know, and to a certain degree, that worked out okay for a while. Like, there was some baseline stuff. I did need to learn my chords, my scales, uh, some kind of basic uh, foundational stuff that does apply to lots of different genres. Um, and I'm a better guitar for guitarist for it. But w in reality... Uh, outside of those lessons, I wasn't really listening to jazz. I wasn't passionate about it. I didn't go listen to people play. I didn't play it with others. Um, I didn't listen to records, jazz records, all that much. So it wasn't, it didn't really make a lot of sense. It wasn't, it was kind of a disconnect between what I f was sort of studying and then what I was passionate about listening to and wanting to play. Uh, so for the last uh, two and a half years or so, I have been <laughs> fully immersed in the jazz world and jazz music in general. So my uh, progression has in, improved dramatically because I am focused. I have focused my attention on a specific thing and immersed myself in it. There are tunes that I, I walk around the house humming. Right? I want. I listen to this music all the time. I play with people as often as I can. I go see live music. Uh, so these are things that I really want and have focused on both in my learning and it's something that I actually enjoy and listen to often. Uh, so not just learning for learning's sake, right? So that all really just ties back to what we started with, which is having goals and staying focused on achieving those goals. Uh, I think if, you're, if your goal right now is to just be better, that, that's not good enough. You need to think more deeply about what being better is in service of. Okay, let's say magically you are better, but better at what? Better at doing what and why? You know, uh, getting better should be in service of, I want to play uh, at the Village Vanguard in 10 years, right? Okay, I've got a long way to go to get to that point, but that might be like a long-term goal that uh, that I can kind of keep looking at in the distance and then just breaking it down year by year, month by month, week by week, day by day, moment to moment in service of some goal that's going to get me to the next the next thing. And then focus really comes in from, you know, almost a literal standpoint. Here's what I need to work on. I can kind of see behind that uh, the next thing that I want to do and the next thing I want to do and the next thing I want to do. But I can't focus on that thing way back in the back because I'm not there yet. I've got these other things I need to focus on first. So kind of narrowing your, your focus and, uh, and limiting the scope of what you're uh, working on can be hugely beneficial. Uh, so I think that's about it. So if you're bouncing around, 
uh, watching this video or my other videos or videos from all kinds of people and you're just sort of like, okay, I'm playing this for a day, I'm playing this for a day uh, and feeling like you're not getting anywhere, take some time and think about why you're doing, why you're trying to learn the guitar or music uh, in the first place. What are you trying to do? You know, get a piece of paper out if you need to and just kind of jot some ideas down. Think about, um, think about these things. And then once you've done that, okay, I want to uh, be the next Chris Thiele or whatever, then you break that down into individual steps. Like, okay, what do I need to do to get there? Uh, month by month, week by week, day by day. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, check out Mike's video and follow his uh, advice. I think it's wonderful. I uh, highly recommend checking out uh, the Effortless Mastery uh, book. It's really, really good um, for kind of like the mental aspects of learning and playing music. Um, yeah, and then just stay focused. <laughs> That's the key. Uh, so anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and thank you both for those questions, and keep them coming. Check my uh, ask, ask Me Questions video out and send me some emails, questions. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.